Around here the Romans set up their first camp on the way to the Rhine. They had taken another way after Arminius had informed Varus about a potential uprising in the west. However, they did not know that they were observed by hateful eyes. They had entered a deadly trap. Hi, I'm just working on this video and therefore I want to ask you for your help. If you want to support this channel, it would be nice if you could like and share this video. Thank you. Tiberius had managed to bring Germania under Roman control. Since 3 BC, Roman governors were responsible for the province. But they faced a huge challenge. Germania was different to any other province in the Roman Empire. These already had central institutions before the Romans came. So the Romans just had to exchange these institutions with Roman ones. However, in Germania the Romans had to rely on an extremely unstable political situation. More minor decisions were made by the chiefs and more major ones by a ting. The ting was a council of free men and some even called it an early democratic organization. So the Germanic people had no experience with the Roman system and therefore quickly antagonized it. It was no wonder that the new Roman province was erupted by multiple uprisings. The first major uprising is known as Immensum Bellum, or Massive War, which erupted in the year 1 AD. Multiple Germanic tribes tried to free themselves from the Roman occupation after Marcus Vinicius became governor. The war went on for three years till Tiberius was called to end it. In 4 AD he marched into Germania and subjugated the Kiruski for a second time. During the winter, he planned a massive pincer movement to end the Germanic resistance. This offensive began in 5 AD. The Roman army marched to the Elbe, where they defeated the Langobardi. Here, they united with a fleet and together they sailed down the Elbe. Many Germanic tribes, including the Langobardi, fled to the other side of the Elbe to escape Roman rule. The Rons remaining had no other choice than to lay down their arms for a second time. But the Germanic threat was not over. In the last part I told you about the Marcomanni, who left their home in the Mainz region in the year 9 BC to escape Drusus. Under their king Marbot, they formed a sovereign kingdom in modern Bohemia. Marbot had encountered Roman legions and therefore trained and organized his men in a similar way. Marbot was also joined by several Germanic warbands that did not want to obey the Roman rule and therefore Marbot had formed the first Germanic kingdom. A huge Germanic army based on a Roman model was a large threat for the Romans and therefore Tiberius planned a final offensive to end the Germanic threat once and for all in the year 6 BC. In a final pincer movement, two armies, in total 100,000 men strong, advanced from the south and the west on the kingdom of Marbot. Day after day, the giant army came closer and closer, till they stopped. A massive unrest had erupted in Pannonia and Tiberius was forced to pull his troops out of Germania to bring the province back under Roman control, which he did. However, at this point massive unrest erupted in Rome. The campaigns against the Germanic tribes were very expensive and in contrast to other campaigns they could not be financed with captured loot. Therefore the Roman taxpayer had to pay for them. This infuriated many Romans. They were also angry because the Germanic tribes were protected by Roman legions and that for free because many Germanic tribes just did not pay their taxes. Many cities and regions profited from the presence of a Roman legion. They ensured protection and economical gains. Just think of the countless European cities that began their history as a Roman base. Germania also profited from the Roman infrastructure. All of these riots were even made worse by a famine. As a reaction to the riots, Augustus sent an experienced leader to Germania, Varus. Varus was supposed to turn Germania into a profitable province of the Roman Empire. He had been the governor of Syria, a region known for its unrests. Therefore, he seemed to be the right man for the job. Upon his arrival in Germania in 7 AD, he quickly began to turn the Germanic people into obedient residents of the Roman Empire. However, here he made a big mistake. Cassius Dio wrote that the Germanic people had no problem with accepting the Roman lifestyle if given enough time. Varus, however, 
tried to accelerate this process and even forced the Germanic people into it. For example, he also applied the Roman law, which was quite confusing for the Germanic people. He treated them like the residents of Syria, but the people of Syria and Palestine had lived in states for thousands of years, something that can't be said for the Germanic people. It was only a matter of time before a new uprising would erupt. Interestingly, his main antagonist was on his side during his first years in Germania, Arminius. Arminius was a Koruski who was born around 17 BC. In the year 7 AD, he commanded a Roman auxiliary unit, most likely a cavalry unit. We don't know how he ended up on the Roman side and we also don't know his Germanic name. However, we do know that Arminius was given the status of a Roman citizen and that he even was raised to the knight class, an honor no other Germanic man was given at this time. During the time of the Battle of the Teutoburger Forest, there were only 30 knights in Germania, meaning that Arminius must have belonged to Varus closest circle. Some even speak from a personal relationship. So Arminius had a lot to gain in Germania. However, he decided against that. We don't know what motivated him. Maybe he was motivated by the Roman oppression of the Germanic tribes, or maybe he just wanted to form his own Germanic kingdom, we can't say that. All that we know is that in the year 9 AD, Arminius began his personal war against the Roman Empire. For this, Arminius managed to unite multiple chiefs behind him. And he even did this without making the Romans suspicious. However, there was one chief that did not want to help Arminius, Marbot and his Marcomanni. Arminius would not forget this betrayal. The summer campaign of the year 9 BC happened without any incidents. In September, Varus and his free legions were at the Weser. From here, they wanted to return to the Rhine to spend the winter there. It was planned to take the route along the Lippe, which was already under heavy Roman control. However, his closest companion, Arminius, told him about an uprising in Western Germania. Varus decided to confront the uprising on his way to the Rhine and therefore chose another way which was less developed. So the free legions, 80,000 men in total, and the accompanying civilians began to move west. However, the way was not suited for Roman legions. To the left you had the Wiengebirge and to the right a large moor. The way also only allowed four men to walk next to each other, resulting in a 60 km long column. On the first day of the march, around 60 km to the west, the Germanic people began to build a wall on the mountain of Kalkrise. This wall would allow them to retreat after successful attacks. At Kalkrise, the Wiengebirge and the moor formed a natural bottleneck, an ideal location for a massive ambush. Till now the Romans did not know that they had marched into a deadly trap. Like usual, they constructed a camp on the evening. On the second day, Germanic forces began to systematically attack Roman garrisons stationed all over the province. Varus had sent out a lot of his men to perform police duties. The Germanic forces took them out without alarming the main army. While Varus' men had to fight the elements, the Germanic army prepared their first attack on the Roman legions. The Roman legionaries had to wait again because something blocked the way. Suddenly, Germanic warriors erupted from the forest and attacked them, while the Germanic auxiliaries also began to attack their former allies. This caused a huge shock, and the whole day, the Roman legions were not able to organize resistance. Only after the Romans had prepared an improvised camp and trenches, the attacks stopped. During the night, the legionaries burned everything that was not necessary, so that it would not slow them down on the next day. Day number three began with minor attacks, but after a while, the Romans reached open territory and prepared to engage the Germanic forces in an open battle. However, Arminius did not fall for the bait. He knew that he would likely lose an open land battle and therefore waited till the Romans were forced to move on. Varus realized that if he stayed any longer, he would run out of food and therefore continued his way. Now the Germanic forces began to attack the Romans again and again. 
they would storm out of the forest, overpower a group of Romans, and then retreat. At the evening, the Romans constructed another camp. However, this one was much smaller than the one that had been built the day before, suggesting that at this point the Romans had already suffered severe losses. On the fourth day, Varus and his men continued their way. However, most of them would not experience the next morning. As they closed in on Kalkrise, the area between the Moor and the Wiengebirge became narrower and narrower. Overall, the area looked like a hourglass here. If Varus and his men were able to pass this bottleneck, they would reach open territory, which would allow them to fight back. But the Germanic tribes did not plan to let them pass. Remember that the Germanic forces built a wall here that would allow them to hold the area. The wall also allowed them to constantly harass the passing Romans. After a while, the remaining Roman soldiers reached an open area that had been used by Germanic farmers. Here they formed fighting formations and were ready for their final battle. Instead of dying while trying to flee through the bottleneck, they wanted to die in a final battle. At this point, they were attacked by the whole Germanic army. I don't have to say that the remaining Romans did not have a chance. All of them were killed, including Varus. Arminius had won. The Romans had lost three legions in the forests of Germania. The news about the loss of the legions caused panic in Rome. Augustus allegedly screamed, Quintili vare, legiones rede, Varus, give me back my legions. However, next to panic there was also a call for revenge. Germania, and especially Arminius, would pay for their betrayal. Thank you very much for watching this documentary. As some of you may know, this is not the end of our story. Therefore, subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss anything. But then I can only say stay healthy, goodbye and see you next time.